Question six, final part of the question, is a buffer solution which is being made up. Now, I've been given various bits of information about it. It's a pH of five, that's really important. Biochemist is adding solid sodium ethanoate, so rather than the last part of the question where they were partially neutralizing the ethanoate, well, neutralizing the calcium carbonate by the ethanoic acid, so it's partially neutralized ethanoic acid. This time what we've got is ethanoic acid and solid sodium ethanoate. So it's a different way of making a buffer. We've got to be careful about that. And interestingly here we've added solid to a volume of 400 centimetres cubed. So we've got, we can turn that into decimetres cubed just to make our life easier. And we know that the Ka for ethanoic acid is given to us here. And we need to calculate the mass of sodium ethanoate that the biochemist needs to dissolve in the ethanoic acid to prepare this buffer solution. And we're going to assume that the volume of the solution remains constant at 400 centimetres cubed on dissolving the sodium ethanoate. So we need to work out what is going on with the ethanoate here. That's our unknown. So we're going to get the mass, so we need the number of moles of the ethanoate. So when we're thinking about buffers, this is always remember it's useful just to have the equilibrium down here, CH3COOH dissociating to give H plus and CH3COO minus. And that's what's actually happening in this buffer. And so we can write the Ka for this ethanoic acid as just being H plus CH3COO minus over the undissociated acid concentration. Now we need to be really really careful now when we're using this equation. So we need what we would do if it was just a weak acid, there was no sodium ethanoate added, is we would say that the H plus and the ethanoic concentration are identical because they're formed by the same reaction. However, in this system, we've added a load of sodium ethanoate. So we've added a load of ethanoate. So H plus is not equal to CH3COO minus. If you go down that route, you're making a real pickle for yourself. Because actually this is what we want to calculate, because we need the number of moles, so we need its concentration. So we can rearrange the equation in the following way. So it make CH3COO minus concentration the subject of this. CH3COOH. So we made that the subject of the formula. Now we need then, if we're going to work out its concentration, to know three things. Now we know that the Ka because we've been told that in the question. 1.75 times 10 to the minus 5. How are we going to work out the concentration of ethanoic acid? Well, we know that because we've been told that ethanoic acid is in a concentration of 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed. How are we going to get the concentration of H plus ions? Well, we've told the pH of the solution, so we know that pH is minus log to the base 10 of H plus, concentration and so we can just simply write this as 10 to the power minus 5 and conveniently here the 10 to the power minus 5's cancel and so we end up with a concentration of ethanoate of 0 0.35 moles per decimeter cubed now we're almost there we need to work out the number of moles of this now and we're going to do that to be concentration multiplied by the volume of the solution. So when we do 0 0.35 times 0 0.4, we're going to find out that our, our number of moles is 0 0.14 moles of the ethanoate. And now with the final thing we need to do is just to find the mass of that. So the mass of ethanoate that is needed. And now we need to remember that it's the sodium salt that's been used, not just the ethanoate. Now we know that CH3COO minus is going to combine with 1Na plus to form its salt. Well, rather we should probably have this arrow going in the reverse direction because that's what's produced the ethanoate and therefore there's a one-to-one -one ratio between these two. So the number of moles is the same. The number of moles of CH3COO minus. And we need to multiply that by the molar mass, which in this case is going to be 0.14 multiplied by 82.0 for the molar mass, 
and then when we work that through that turns out to be 11.5 grams to three significant figures. So this was just adding up the relative atomic masses of the constituent atoms in here.